Congratulations on having the film here. This, uh, Owen, I've got to start with you, man. Uh, is it, uh, how hard is it to shoot people looking like they're having unmitigated fun all the time? It was good fun, actually. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, we, we um, it, it was actually the, the one thing I think that got us through the film on the schedule we had, it was a low budget film, it was an insane schedule, was that generally you're turning over on scenes that are really good fun to shoot. Um, so it, generally there was a really good spirit about the place and quite a lot of laughs. I mean, it, I mean, it got that way to begin with. It was quite, it was quite intense as everyone sort of got into their characters and there was a bit of nervousness. But by the end of it, we all were enjoying ourselves. When you're working on uh, what kind of rich text, yeah, um, is it is it hard to kind of give the actors the freedom they need, or do they find it in the language naturally? I think that with. Uh, with something like this, I think you've got to be quite, um, you've actually got to be quite rigid and dogmatic about the way that you deliver it. It's one of those pieces that is, it's, it's, it's written and that's what you enjoy about it, it's the way that sentiments are crafted, it's the way that things bounce off, off of each other. So on the one hand you've actually got to be quite um, locked down on what you need out of a scene. But at the same time, of course, you know, everyone then brings something to it and, it, and, and each character suddenly becomes that much bigger and more exciting because someone brought that extra bit to it. But in terms of just shooting as the dialogue and the craft of the humour, John's written a, a script that, that has a certain way about it that you've got to nail because if you don't, it doesn't, it doesn't work. John, was that part of the deal from the get-go is that you wanted to have the, the control over the screen. He was very controlling. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a very controlling person. Um, no, you have to, when you make a movie, it's, it's art by committee. And some of the, you know, there are some frustrations in that sometimes. Not in this movie, on others I've been involved with. But uh, one of the great things about it is sometimes it exceeds your expectations. You know, there are scenes in the movie that were just so much bigger and brasher and bolder than I ever imagined they would be. Yeah. But specifically in the dialogue thing, uh, the way the book works is you have some horrific and disgraceful sentiments but which are expressed very eloquently, mm. one would hope. And that's the kind of crux of art, in a way, of, of literature. So a, a lot of the time was trying to get that on the page for the script and that's why, as Owen says, he was quite protective about mm. you have to nail this as it's written, you know? Yeah. But uh, then obviously there are instances where things creep in and, you know, um, when they work, that's when it exceeds what you've written. And for you, I mean, it's kind of a kind of cliche question that, that authors get asked, but it must be pretty thrilling watching people running around screaming out your words that you've put down on a page. <laughs> it's, it's, well, uh, maybe it's just me. It's always more nerve-wracking than thrilling because you're just thinking, uh, especially on a, a low budget shoot, you, you know, you're under so much pressure. But it, it's, the, the big thrill is always like the first day when you walk on the set and you see the, the, the set built and there's like a hundred technicians or carpenters and sparks all doing this thing because, you know, you typed some sentence on a page, some <laughs> poor guy has to build all this yeah. stuff, you know, that's always a bit of a rush. Yeah. And Ed, for you, I mean, you got to add a fair amount of colour in your way. <laughs> literally. <laughs> literally, yeah. a lot of colour. Um, so what was it like for you entering this world and then playing off Nicholas and, uh, and the whole world that that was created? I mean, I would have come and just made the fucking tea and uh, handed out the <laughs> toast. Like, this was a project, Owen knows how passionate I was from yeah. the beginning. And I was in South Africa shooting another movie. And when I got the email that said at the top of it, kill your friends, I was like, I emailed back to my agent, I was like, this is my favorite book. We need to like, you know, and I worked so hard. I worked hard on all of my auditions, but I worked really hard on this one. I had like a police, uh, had like all of this like outfits and stuff and like, you know. And Even I was, provided his own wardrobe as well yeah. for it. And literally all those shirts were um, a friend of mine's, you know, and, and uh, all of the jewelry. So um, no, it was a dream, it was a dream, it was a dream to be a part of it and to work with, with Nick and you know, John's, John's brutal and, 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 and violent um, temper. <laughs> Temper was terrifying. That's just an email. <laughs> <laughs> no, but his, his, his words is just so, you know, the, the, for my generation, you know, which is a generation which, you know, didn't necessarily grow up with all the reading the great um, writers and everything, you know, when we found John. 
fucking Niven. We were like, <laughs> this guy, you know, all oh, right, we love books now. And like, it opened it up. I, I read Kill Your Friends and I bought like 10 copies and gave them all to my friends who never read books. Well, and, um, it's and great to it. give something back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Feel responsible. Yeah. But that's the interesting thing is like, you're talking about it as if it's like ancient history almost, right? But it's like 1997, mm. it's like 20 years ago. Mm. Some people, it's very much living memory. Mm. And, uh, but, yeah, well, I mean, it's essentially a period piece too. It is, yeah. yeah well, right. I mean, I'm old enough that I still think the Strokes are kind of a new band <laughs> once you reach that certain age. But yeah, for a lot of people of kind of you know, 18 to 23 going to see the movie, it's it's pre-consciousness the yeah. time for them, you know? Yeah. And um, for you, like creating that environment of the 90s when we kind of don't, it had like one of those periods where it's like, what are the 90s about? Yeah. Um, it wasn't as defined as the 80s and then, and then now we look back at it and we see all this music that we mm. see as being revolutionary and all the garage sound and all the grunge sound and all that sort of stuff that was coming out at the time mm. actually does paint a pretty healthy little period. Oh, completely. I mean, I think it was one of those ones that you go into it and you try and work out how you're going to portray it and how, you know, and you, what I didn't want to do is to create this sort of like antique show of like 97 memorabilia. Yeah. <laughs> and it was more about just capturing sort of like an essence of the time. So it was like looking at film film reference of 97 that we want. So I think we, we, were, we got quite into sort of Fight Club and the look of Fight Club purely because that for me, it, 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 that sort of steely slickness reminds me of 97 quite nicely. And even sort of the wardrobe taking sort of like bits of 97 but you didn't want everyone to have sort of like a uh, Noel Gallagher sort of haircut and everyone wearing sort of big baggy sort of rape you know it didn't mean you want you want to take little tiny bits of it but ultimately you wanted to create a look that felt also quite filmic and iconic in a way to try and catch that little and so it was it was just a sort of a fine line of, of, of trying to get certain things just right yeah. and it was cool like seeing in the credits like no animals or a and r people were harmed during the making of this film yeah, yeah. that was a lie though wasn't it <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot it was, it was, yeah. to do that for legal reasons for art right for, art, art, yeah. Yeah. for me it was like it was it was kind of weird putting those two types of things in the same sentence it's like we don't we don't preserve animal we don't want to preserve a and R people necessarily the way we the way we want to protect animals, yeah. um, and perhaps uh, you know being a, a sign of the times for you. I mean, having had that in your rich history on which to draw, um, is it is it true that like you passed up opportunities to sign Coldplay? And oh, is, go here. Is, that, is that real? Is well, that I, every, every time the story you're sitting gets, in the presence know, of brightness, it, yeah, yeah. Is it, is it true? I'm really greatly bad in Arman. Um, but every time the story gets told, and I get asked about it a lot, it's, it, it, it makes it sound like I was sitting in front of Coldplay and Muse, where you yeah. can't sing, you can't play, you look yeah. awful. <laughs> and then, of course, it wasn't like that. I just, I, I, you know, I got the demos like every other you know, guy did at the time and just thought, I don't really like this. <laughs> so it wasn't quite as grandiose as I turned them down to their face. But yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, on reflection, I, I, I've made better commercial decisions. <laughs> there was a, a quote in the movie speaking about commercial decisions where it said, you make decisions with hundreds of thousands, of, uh, hundreds of thousands, uh, of hundreds, and thousands, 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 sometimes millions of pounds, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right? And and obviously the and the fear is incredible, and none of us have a clue what we're doing. I mean, the same could be applied to Most making or right. any sort of artistic <laughs> endeavor. Yeah, I yes. think also, do you know what? It actually really for me as well summed up the time. It was really, it was like, it was a time of, it was like, it was very, very hedonistic, and there was a sense of like, what, how much can we really get away with? You know, how little can we do to get to actually uh, earn our position in this? And it was, it's sort of like, how, how long can we make the party last and actually mm. go to work and still keep it going? And it was, it's sort of that sentiment of like getting away with it. And um, I also think sums up that, that era yeah. really well. And it, we're it, all very young. Um, and we're the, the period representing the book, I was like 25, 26. So watching guys like Ed and Nick playing those parts, mm. it really reminded me that there were lots of decisions getting made without a responsible adult mm -hmm. in the room that, you know, often a huge... Are you saying I'm not a responsible <laughs> adult? <laughs> you no, know, I speak only of myself, but, um, but you know, it, it was that period where we... I often think of Francis Ford Coppola's quote about Apocalypse Now, you know, we were, we were too young, we had access to too much money and drugs, and little by little we went insane. <laughs> Um, and getting to shoot all over the place. You just mentioned that you were shooting something else in South Africa. Oh, and you just shot in South Africa recently yep. as well with yep. Daniel Radcliffe. Yep. Um, uh, and then on this film, getting to go to Cannes and all that sort of stuff. Like, 
Um, how how is it like traveling to all these different locations? Would you rather do you like going out on set in different places, or, or would you rather kind of build everything? No, I do. I like. I mean, if, if anything, I mean, I'd have liked to maybe done more. You know, we had to. We had to in a funny way. Kill your friends has got part of its look from out of necessity. I, I deliberately didn't shoot stuff exteriors because we couldn't. Afford, we couldn't afford them. But in the end, it's sort of you then play to those strengths and you make it feel slightly claustrophobic. You make things take place at night. You make things take place in clubs and sit in, in, you know, so everything doesn't, so you lose, so there's no freshness, there's no fresh breath of air in, in there in, in a way. Um, but but where, when, we, when we could, so we did, a, we did a day in Cannes and we did a day in New York or eight hours in New York. It's amazing how much you, the film needs those moments and what it does to the film at that, that point. Um, so no, I, I love shooting. Uh, you know, anything that gives it, it gives the it gives the story sort of richness. I think, and it and it helps a lot. I think. Mm -hmm. um, and for you, uh, shooting at home versus going away, and does it help you kind of get into a project if you're able to leave home behind? Or? You just miss the kids. Hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the only negative side of it is 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 you know I've got a young son and a yeah. family, so that's yeah. the only negative side. But the great the positive side is that they've been able to travel with me to you know Morocco, South Africa, Canada. Mm. You know, I just shot in uh, Vancouver for four months this year and loved it, and the family loved it as well. So, you know, it's wonderful to be able to travel and to see the world and to go to countries I would never have gone to. Mm. Um, you know, but I must admit, I was so excited to shoot a movie in London. Yeah, that was when fun. we did Kill Your yeah. Friends. But then the reality of it was shit, because I live in East London <laughs> yeah, and we shot too. in West London, and yeah. that's. Fine in most cities, but in London, it took like an hour and a half to get there every day and back. And I was like, I don't want to shoot in London anymore. Yeah, <laughs> you no, know? no. It was nice working with British crews, you know, spending that amount because you do you form a little family, and it was not it was on that on that side of things. That was that was really nice as well. I think there's a nice vibe at Pinewood. Yeah, yeah. and uh, so you, yeah, so you were at Pinewood most. Yeah. No, Teddington. Which oh, is yeah. Teddington, yeah. Part, 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 it's part of the Pinewood. Complex, but it's, yeah. it's a smaller little part, and we took over. I mean, the thing is, it, we, 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 it was shot there, but we actually used a bit of office space that we just... We, we, I think it was an old Chinese TV station that <laughs> really? moved out. Was it? So we gutted it and then built our office, the Unigram office, in there, and then we used a bit of studio stuff there. Wow. Yeah. Very cool. And John, like, Sunshine Cruise and uh, other books coming up, Will you take the role of screenwriter on those as well? Yeah, um, I, the Sunshine, Sunshine Cruise Company, my new novel's been optioned by Donna Gigliotti, who produced um, a Silver Linings Playbook and Shakespeare in Love, The Reader, and she's fabulous, and I'm halfway through the screenplay for that at the moment. Um, I've adapted, I think, three or four of my novels. Um, Jess Butterworth's done one. So it's, it's, it's always interesting. Uh, John Baird's actually from Filth is adapting Straight White Male, another one of my novels to write and direct. So it's, um, some ideas come to you and think, well, this is a movie, and some ideas think this is a book. I also write original scripts. But it's always with tra translating your own novel to script. I mean, Owen pushed me, pushed everyone, as a good director does, very hard in this movie we went through. God knows how many drafts. And then uh, the other thing in post-production now with Digit, the resources you have to sort of tinker with the movie after it's shot. We did a lot of what I must. I think in the end, I had 200 final draft documents nearly on my laptop, all with different little bits of VO from Nick that we're just dropping in and trying a line here, and you know. Um, so yeah, you, you burn me up, buddy. <laughs> and uh, final question for each of you, uh, given that there's a karma bank situation going on with this film, um, how, is your karma bank healthier or less healthy as a result of having made this, this picture? I think I was already on the guest list to hell, <laughs> so um, this has made no difference to that. <laughs> I don't know, I, I, I hope we've... Um, I, tr I try and remain positive that that we've that we've actually it's a satire. So um, hopefully, is that what you're telling yourself? <laughs> exactly. That hopefully that we've actually um, informed people and made sort of young aspiring musicians' lives maybe that much easier. <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, probably I'm probably fucked. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what? Uh, let's just say that my karma, my karma balance makes the national debt of Greece look like an absolute bargain. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks for coming in and hanging out with us for a little bit. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.